So how old were you when you started drinking coffee? Perhaps in college? Well, these days it's not uncommon to see kids at the local coffee stand ordering a grande latte. So is this trend something parents should be concerned about? Tonight in a KXLY4 Focus, Autumn Wells Live J answered this question and some of her findings may surprise all of us. Autumn? Yeah, you know, guys, I was really surprised to see these large groups of teenagers lined up here at Jacob's Java early in the morning or during their lunch breaks, not only because these coffee drinks are expensive, but also because of the large amounts of caffeine or espresso that they were getting in them. Now, espresso is, of course, legal, but doctors and nutritionists agree it isn't healthy. <laughs> These days, kids have access to a number of things that past generations did not, like cell phones, iPods, and coffee. No, not regular coffee. We're talking grande sugar-free vanilla non-fat extra hot no foam lattes, or... Hi, can I have a grande caramel macchiato, please? Whatever you're fancy. Thanks. You know, Starbucks revolutionized the coffee world when it tested the coffee house concept in Seattle in 1984 and served up their first cafe latte. Fast forward more than two decades and the fancy coffee trend has trickled down to teens. 14-year-old Kimberly Gerard started drinking coffee three years ago. My mom and dad both drink coffee a lot and we used to go to Starbucks a lot and so me and my mom would always go get like a latte to split and then I got so that when I started working for my dad and that that I got more money, so I started just buying a small one of my own. Jamie Schmidt's been working at Jacob's Java here in Spokane for eight years and has witnessed the rise in Java popularity among youth. Do a lot of them order maybe more than just a single shot? Oh, yeah. There are some that get like six. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six shots of espresso. Yeah. Yes. You see them lining up in the morning. What can I get started for you? Or during their lunch breaks at local coffee stands. And did you want a punch card? Teens and caffeine isn't a new concept. After all, sugary soda pop has been around for more than 100 years. Is coffee just a natural progression or a step towards shaky ground? So do you want three shots or two shots? Registered dietitian Michelle Weinbender works at Sacred Heart Medical Center. She says one problem with lattes and mochas is that they tend to replace meals, whereas soda pop does not. But again, I worry about kids just taking those drinks and not eating other foods. So they're missing out on a whole meal or a whole snack when they could be getting some really good nutrition. Do you want whipped cream on top? Most kids that we talk to, and again, they are just kids, said they drink coffee for an added boost of energy. After all, coffee has more milligrams of caffeine than soda. It's a good perk really lifts you up for the day and gets you ready for school and all the hard work, so awesome, thank you. But Weinbender says they're searching for it in the wrong place. They should probably look to a snack, complex carbohydrate and a protein. That should be their first choice. And coffee has some serious side effects, especially for teenagers. We've all heard the wives' tale about it stunting your growth. When I was packing Daddy's lunch this morning, I gave him my lemon Snapple and I took his sucky Italian roast. Do you want it? Mm. Oh. Are you sure you don't want it? Yeah, it might stop my growth. I want to be 5'10 like Cindy Crawford. Dr. Kimberly Grandinetti says coffee may not actually stunt your growth, though that hasn't been proven. But it really shouldn't be drunk until after a person has fully developed. We know overall the effects aren't great and it has some long-term effects, um, but we're not sure as the, the full correlation of those. But in general, the studies have definitely shown that caffeine is not good for children and their ability to grow. And there are other facts about the stimulant to be aware of. It mainly affects the heart rate. It causes tachycardia, which is an increased heart rate. Grandinetti also says that coffee affects the way you think, act, and sleep. So it can cause some sometimes correlated anxiety with that and they're just again restlessness and they're just kind of irritable, just a generalized irritability. And of course there's always the possibility of addiction. If you look at the withdrawal symptoms when you're coming off of it, um, it definitely has shown increased um, headaches and again irritable, it affects your sleep cycle and so you just worry about um, children ingesting caffeine. Seven dollars. Besides the health factor, triple grande caramel macchiatos don't come cheap. How much would you say you spend on coffee? <coughs> About $25. Bucks. $25 on coffee a week? Yeah. I spend more. So for health and economic reasons, teens should try some of these healthier and cheaper alternatives. They could be looking at granola bars or whole grain pretzels, string cheese, low-fat milk, chocolate milk. 
um, a muffin and some fruit, that might be a nice combination, again, to give them that carbohydrate, which is their body's first choice for energy, with some added nutrients throughout the day. And both Weinbender and Grandinetti suggest that parents take an active role in creating a healthy, balanced diet for their kids. You know, I just would recommend a healthy nutrition and just minimize um, the intake of caffeine and until you're older and past your growing stages of life, past teenage years, I would with hold caffeine intake. With everything teens have access to these days, coffee probably isn't the worst. But remember, there are other options out there to help them get through the daily grind. And obviously there are a lot of other caffeinated beverages out there that teens have access to like energy drinks and soda pop, but both Grandinetti and Weinbetter agree it's best to just stay away from all of them. Reporting live, Autumn Wells, KXLY4.